stomach. Okay, hot press. <laughs> That's a nice neck there. Sure would be a shame if someone burned it. So what happens here is um, when you shoot on the firing line, usually you're shooting right next to each other. So it's um, the brass or the casings for every round. Every time you shoot, the casing shoots out the right side in a far direction. But since everybody's right next to each other, usually what happens is we shoot lots and lots of rounds and your barrel gets hot and because your barrel gets hot the inside of your gun gets hot and therefore the casing that shoots out becomes hot brass and the way our uniforms are designed is that the casing will most likely fall to the back of your neck and start burning the back of your neck so there's been plenty of people that during you know infantry school stuff like that you just have a giant burn mark on the back of your neck and that's how you know they got hot brass because we're taught when that happens you don't move you don't do anything you keep the weapon pointed down range and you just let that thing sizzle on the back of your neck until you're able to take care of it okay mm. oh, your roll weapons platoon 0331 machine gunner carefree oblivious to rules and often njp for various reasons njp is like getting in trouble in the military uh legal wise 0351 assault men intelligent rarely pick up rank but are able to fly under the radar quite easily as a result mortar men they <laughs> nobody knows nobody knows where they're at they're usually out training at the mortar range or just kind of off on their own. They're the ones that put the round down the pipe, shoot the round off. Let's see if we got a few good ones. <clears throat> so, salt dog. You just see a few you know brand new boots brand new boots and then a guy in the middle is just all chewed up spit out ate up um and he's been he's been in for a little while he's been through a few field ops for over the years cameras are all torn up always dirty no matter how much you wash them it's still gonna look just torn up and his boots have been through the ringer and he's not and it looks like part of his shoelace is out but he doesn't he doesn't fucking care He's gonna, going out for, you know, his fixed fifth, sixth, seventh field op of the week. And, you know, just a little tired. So that's how you can tell. See if their camis are all uh, dirty or boots are dirty. <laughs> so, um, these chevrons are a rank. So when you, or... Marine Corps rank so when they walk around they have these chevrons on and uh, it has this kind of stuff over it so then it's black but underneath it's just you know silver metal or gold metal and after a while that stuff rubs off and you eventually have to get new chevrons because you know that that black will rub off and usually you get chewed out if you have too much of the rubbing off and someone realizes that you're just too lazy to buy a new pair but this guy has finally figured out why officers like getting saluted or why officers uh are addicted to saluting because he's like hey bro you need to get some new chevrons or a sharpie are you kidding i had four people salute me today it's addicting <laughs> i think i finally understand why officers are the way they are now there was one time that i was doing a machine gun shoot and we were there all day. Um, my Chevron got all scratched up, so it looked, it looked a lot like that one. Um, and I went to the PX, which is like the gas station in the military, to get some snacks or something. And I had an officer salute me. He's like, oh, so, sorry, how's it going, sir? And I look up, and the one saluting me, I think he was fucking with me, was a uh, colonel, a very high-ranking officer. 
and obviously he knew that I was in the wrong and he asked me what are you gonna where are you getting that px and I told him chevrons these uh these new ranks I told him I was getting a new rank and he said that is the right answer let's see some good ones in here doghouse hmm. rank ups are major realism So field day finger, right? Um, field day, for those who don't know, is just a uh, cleaning your room or cleaning, you know, generally cleaning your living quarters or cleaning your room. And uh, usually it's, I believe it's Friday. Every Friday or every Thursday, um, we have to field day our rooms and make sure it passes inspection, right? But every time we get inspected, there always seems to be one tiny piece of something that the staff sergeant or whoever will pick up and they'll blame it on you and they'll make you clean for another two hours or three hours or four hours or whatever. So you have this staff sergeant, I believe. Yep, staff sergeant. This room is clean, Lance Corporal. Then what is this? And it's like one, one hair, you know. Could have easily been there the whole time or could have easily been there when you walk in the room and it just falls off your chin right and Alliance Corporal knows that and he says I'm not sure Staff Sergeant but it looks like two or three more hours of bullshit to me two or three more hours more cleaning more swabbing more wiping shit down and then he'll come back and find something else wrong to clean for another couple hours I never really dealt with false advertising. I didn't, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, but a lot of people that join, they just see these uh, commercials. And in that third frame on the right, you see they, uh, they never, they, it doesn't seem as cool in that third frame. They're like, well, they got me good. Recruiters got me good. So every now and then um, you get assigned call signs on the radio. So um, I think a call sign I've had was Drifter. One was Witch Doctor at one point. Um, but sometimes they're very basic and sometimes they can be a nickname. Uh, and sometimes you'll get a call sign that you don't agree with or not a big fan of. But... Um, your, your officer wants everybody to make sure they use the same call signs so you're stuck with that one for the whole field op so India this is India 3 my platoon's in position standing by over please use the call signs provided for this exercise over I'd rather not this is a straight from the CEO Dragonfire this is dad bod I fucking hate you how copy over dad bod this is Dragonfire read you Libra Charlie out and for those who don't know, Weaver Charlie is loud and clear. I hear you loud and clear. God. Dad bod though. It's rough. It's rough, buddy. It's fine though. I feel you. Let's see. <laughs> oh, 
oh man so this is a good one um in infantry you hike a lot and when i mean hike i don't mean hiking with a little backpack that's like 35 pounds and very easy to walk around it's a nature hike and it's great no i'm talking like heavy heavy pack full of a bunch of random shit that you probably don't even need but it's on the list so you gotta shove it in there or else someone's gonna yell at you and so you're doing these hikes it's hot you're exhausted and they just suck um and sometimes you get too hot and that or you just feel like you can't make it however um heat casualties are a very big problem that we deal with or people deal with in the marine corps and one way that they deal with them is we have these people called corpsmen which are like the medics in the uh marine corps which is that one in the middle of frame with the thermometer right um so if we think we have a heat casualty um we usually they get what's called a silver bullet which is a, a rectal thermometer to check their core temperature to see if they're a heat casualty um see if their body's way hotter than it should be and then they'll get thrown in that vehicle on the right screen where you see the little vehicle in the distance um but he's asking doc to if he can get in the safety vic and the doc says yeah i'll let you in the safety vic you just need to get this uh you need i need to put this thermometer in your butthole in front of everyone and so that's just a risk you're gonna have to take man doc i'm falling out of this hump i don't think i can make it okay do i get to ride the safety vehicle now only if i get to put this thermometer in your bowl in front of everyone the choice is yours so choice is yours either, either take the silver bullet safety vic or suffer through the rest of the hike just like everybody else god happy to say i never received a silver bullet happens um plenty of new marines or people are becoming marines all the time um it's a cycle you go through boot camp it's about three months and then you get sent out to usually another um two to three month uh type of infantry school depending on your job and then you get to sent to your actual school school and then you get sent to your unit so after these schools, you finally get sent to a unit, right? And you're motivated, you wanted to join, you're super excited to like, you know, start your journey, right? Well, then you run into the guys that have been there a hot minute. They know how much it sucks, especially in infantry. It's rough, it, it fucking drags on you a little bit. That's how you can see the, you know, bags underneath the eyes, the stubble, got chewing. Uh, he's on duty for probably the fifth time in a row over the weekend even though he wants to go hang out on the weekend so you got these new joins good morning corporal we're told to check in with duty we're the f oh it's the world's first female infantry marines we're so excited to start doing all the kinds of awesome infantry stuff so we got female marines joining infantry now um, everyone's so excited but really it's uh it's rough it's boring 
it can't be mundane <laughs> and the uh, corporal just says I guess go to your rooms and start drinking <laughs> good luck hang in there Luckily, this isn't something I've ever done. Um, boots is a term for brand new Marines that have never experienced the Marine Corps yet. They're usually they're very motivated, uh, want to be a Marine very badly, and I guess a, bit, a lot of them love the Marine Corps. Usually, like straight out boot camp, uh, they want to get T-shirts about the Marine Corps. Um, and one thing is tattoos, a lot of moto tats. A lot of boots get a tattoo as soon as they get out or as soon as they get done with boot camp, stating they're, stating they're a Marine or get an Eagle Golden Anchor on their back or um, on their chest, wherever. And this is just showing it to a T. Hey man, I'm looking to get a tattoo today. Yep, United States Marine, I need a new tattoo like right now. <laughs> sure thing, man, come with me. How long have you been in the Marines? Oh, just got a boot camp last week. Never had a tattoo before. I could never find something I wanted on me for the rest of my life. I really wanted a tattoo I would never regret. And usually it's a huge tattoo. It, it doesn't have to be big, but um, some of them that I've seen are the entire back, huge back piece. Um, and then later when they're not as motivated to be a Marine or not a big fan of the Marine Corps anymore. They have this huge moto tat that they gotta stick with them for the rest of their lives, which is really funny. But um, no, nah, I, I like this comic. It's a good one. Let's see, TSA command mode safe. Oh man. This is a good one. So, um, TSA, keeping everyone safe. TSA are the guys at the airport, wave you down, um, you know, make you go through the, um, make you go through the scanner, make sure you don't got anything explosive on you or whatnot. Um, sir, stop, please. I'm gonna need you to remove your jacket and any metal items you have in your person. Seriously, you realize Marines fight terrorists, right? Like, it's all we do. Yeah, but I'm gonna have to be a dick because I always wanted to join, but I couldn't pass the HASFAB. At least he's honest, which I'll give him that. He's honest. He's trying to be an asshole because sometimes we'll be in our full service uniform like that. You have your metal ribbons, bars, that belt's metal. Um, you have to take off our shoes, and it's a very tight fit. So it's rough. I've had one time where. I was going through the airport and they made me take all my sh my shit off, put it in the little bins, and it, it was just, took way too long. And it was really annoying, but you know, they got a job to do. <laughs> but, I, but I was still irritated as fuck, that's fine. All right, we'll do a couple more of these. Let's see. Oh, this one's good. I'll do this one. So MREs, Meals Ready to Eat, is uh, little vacuum sealed meals that you get in the military. Um, they're usually very basic. They'll have like a general like main meal. Um, my favorite is like Sloppy Joe. They'll have Sloppy Joe meat in there. And then there'll be another packet for um, snacks like uh, MRE or Skittles, M&Ms, um, maybe some crackers of some sort, wheat snack bread, something like that. And then it'll have, usually I have some sort of drink, like um, a little powder, like Gatorade powder or something in there. 
and some utensils, um, a napkin, usually a laxative gum that you can chew on. But there's different types. There's different types of meals, and it can be very. There, there's good meals and bad meals. We we have our favorites. People have their not so favorite, right? And it's just funny. It's just a. Uh, Everybody, as soon as Emory's break out, it's a mad scramble to get the ones that you want. Like in the middle, you see chili mac or chili with mac, uh, pizza. My favorites are sloppy joe, um, sloppy joe, um, chicken fajita, penne pasta, and spaghetti. Spaghetti was a good one. Came with Skittles. Uh, depending on what snacks it came with, I liked them based off the snacks that it came with. Um, but after, you know, all the experienced Marines grab the shit that they want. Usually the brand new boots are left with dog shit with sauce or veggie pizza that, you know, the one that everyone hates. And it sucks. <laughs> I feel sorry, but, you know, maybe next time he'll learn to grab that Marie he wants right at the beginning. Mentorship. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Teaching boots. Uh, fire team tactics today. Nope. Skating tactics. <laughs> teaching them how to avoid working parties and staff NCOs now. Next, I'm gonna teach them how to befriend a corpsman for their light duty chits. <laughs> oh. Um. So typically, he said uh, fire team tactics today because I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Is something that we teach. To teach you the general amount of time it takes for an en enemy to see you and to bring their weapon up and to attack you so I'm up you get up he sees me the enemy sees you and you get down before they have a chance to shoot at you right or to really acquire um, your sights so he thought he was doing fire team tactics but he's nope skating tactics uh, trying to avoid working parties and staff NCOs so instead of trying to avoid gunfire they're just trying to avoid having to work or working parties and staff NCOs trying to light them up for hands in their pockets, having the wrong haircut, whatever. And the next thing you teach them is how to befriend a corpsman, which is like a medic, uh, for their, for a profile, for a medical profile. If you get, if your buddies with a corpsman, sometimes you can get them to write a sheet of paper that tells your command that you're not allowed to do certain certain PT, like certain um, physical fitness events or exercises, so you don't have to do as much. So, he's teaching them all how to skate. Maybe not the proper way how to teach uh, brand new Marines or Marines that are in, but you know, teach their own. I like it, personally. made his only can of dip last eight days and nights for him and his boys it was a true Hanukkah miracle so some so you'll be in the field for I don't know how long you'll be in the field for eight days sometimes you're in the field for a month and uh, of course people don't pack the right amount of stuff especially their dip their chewing tobacco or smokes so this is just a jab at um people that don't take enough chewing tobacco out and a lance corporal made uh, one can of dip last eight eight days and eight nights truly trying to ration out little pouches of dip to throw on your lip which i find really funny i didn't dip very much i only would uh, use chewing tobacco when i was trying to stay awake um at night and just you just have to do anything to try to stay awake um, smoke, dip, slap your face, blow some hot air in your face or something. You'll do just about anything to stay awake. All 
Let's see. This is the next one. You know what? I think that's a good one. Uh, oh no. I was going to do the other one. Oh well. Uh, Prometheus, nope. tell you that 3rd Marine Regiment is going to become 3rd Marine Wood Earl Regiment. Oh my god. <laughs> Back to basics. <laughs> Back to basics. Sometimes if you fuck up enough um, they will go back to like boot camp style stuff which is you know Basically, you're just a grown man being treated like a child and getting marched to chow, getting marched back from chow, being in formation, um, doing actual drill movements like you're back in boot camp. And it's just, one, it's embarrassing. Two, it's, um, I don't know, it's annoying. Three, is takes up all of your time and just like takes all your motivation out of the day. Because now you're just being treated like a child everywhere you go. And then everyone sees you do that too. So this guy's asking his buddy if he's okay because he's crying. It's like, no. Staff Sergeant made us march over here. Information. He actually called Cadence. And the other guy understands. He says, oh my god. He made us do drill. Actual drill. Like we were in boot camp or something. I am so, so sorry. I've had a couple times where that's... We've gotten enough trouble where we went back to the basics and it's it's just dumb. This is being treated like a child again. Waking up at, you know, five, six in the morning, standing in form you know, standing at attention outside your rooms to get inspected. I had I had to have a full camelback, a and whatever who doesn't know what a camelback is, is a um a water bladder that you hold on your like little backpack. Uh, two full canteens in a backpack basically and stand outside our rooms then we would get marched to chow in a formation like a little uh, like in lines and in rows and it was, uh, it was a, little, a little degrading a little embarrassing but we did fuck up so you know we it's not like we didn't completely deserve it so that's why Back to basics. But I was expecting to do this a little bit longer. But I think I'm going to call it for a night. I'm just a little tired. I got back from training today. Thought I had a little bit more in me for the stream tonight. But I appreciate you guys who uh, are were watching it during the stream. And who will watch it um, in the next upcoming days. And I will try to do another stream tomorrow night at around 10 p.m. Um, Central Standard Time. So, as always, thank you for watching. Stay sleepy. And I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>